So in the recent update to Adobe Muse that came out this past week, that's the 2014.1 update, we got some great new features. We got self-hosted web fonts, bulleted lists, and we also got some enhancements to forms. Uh, there are two main enhancements that have been made to forms that I'd like to talk to you guys about. And I've already got a form dropped in here, and if you're not sure how to get a form in there, go and look for your widgets library panel, and on the widgets library panel, you will find a forms folder containing two options to do a more detailed form or a more simple form. And this is just so a user or a viewer of your website can submit something to you uh, without having to open their email client and write you an email. So these forms are a great way for people to communicate, but one of the features we've been missing is to have a CAPTCHA if you're not hosting your website with Business Catalyst. And what a CAPTCHA is, is that annoying little box where you have to type in a code to prove you're a real human being. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with those. Uh, most of us really don't like them because they're usually hard to read. With Adobe Business Catalyst, you've been able to add a CAPTCHA all along. We've had this feature if we click on our form settings. Actually, let me click outside the form and back on it once to make sure I have the entire form selected. I click on this blue circle here. We've always had this BC CAPTCHA option, and that allows us to create a CAPTCHA as long as we're hosting our website using Adobe Business Catalyst, and that CAPTCHA will help cut down on spam. What we haven't been able to do is host a website wherever we want and use a CAPTCHA. So what they've added here is this reCAPTCHA feature, which is a Google feature. And if I turn that on, you'll see something that probably looks familiar to you, a code and a box where people have to type in what they see. This avoids automated spam. So uh, I do recommend using this on websites that get a lot of traffic because uh, it will significantly cut down on the amount of automated spam and just weird messages that come through. If you have a small website, this might be overkill. If you're not getting a ton of spam, I would say this is overkill. Your viewers don't want to deal with these if they don't have to. So only use this feature if you absolutely have to. Now when you add this feature, you get this little dialog box here where it says public key and private key. Now the reason it says these two things is that this is a Google service that is provided as part of your Google account. So for those of you who have Google accounts, you're already ready to go. But if you want to set one up or if you want to get this reCAPTCHA thing going, go to Google and type reCAPTCHA. And when you type that in, you'll get this web page here. It's google.com slash reCAPTCHA. And when you go to that page, you can set up uh, a reCAPTCHA key for yourself. Now you'll notice when you do this, it says tough on bots, easy on humans. But there are all kinds of weird little references here. And um, see how this is a book? This is a picture of a book. And uh, that previous picture was a picture of a street sign. The way Google does things, it's honestly kind of frightening, but it's amazing at the same time. What they're doing is they're actually taking photos uh, from books, they're taking photos from Google Maps, and uh, these are photos that do contain text, but the text is not digitally transcribed. It's a photograph of something that contains text, like a street sign, for instance. And uh, what Google's actually doing is they're using us to transcribe all of this text. So this, as an example, looks like an address on the side of a building. So if someone were to fill in 4225 as the code, Google actually uses that data to make Google Maps better. And a lot of the other excerpts that we see are excerpts from books, and Google is actually using us uh, by filling in these CAPTCHAs to transcribe uh, written literature into uh, digital literature. It's, it's pretty insane. The, the system is super sophisticated. Uh, but what you'll find is there are features of the reCAPTCHA down here that you can turn on and off. Just about all of these features are helpful. If you turn off audio slash image, you turn off refresh, you turn off help, that's getting rid of buttons that help someone to get past the CAPTCHA and have a good experience on your website. I don't recommend turning these things off. They're going to help your audience. They're there to help you help them. So I would keep those things turned on. But the idea of the Google reCAPTCHA feature is you do have to go and set up a reCAPTCHA account and then you get this public key and private key and you basically just copy and paste those in. So I'm actually gonna go and turn this feature off because I'm gonna wanna preview this in the browser and I don't have a public or private key to put in so I'm not gonna be able to preview it in the browser. That's another thing you'll run into. You get an error message or a warning message rather when you try to preview the reCAPTCHA in the browser and you don't already have the key filled in. So now let's talk about checkboxes. This checkbox feature has been long awaited 
and it seems like a simple thing. You just hit the plus sign, adds a checkbox. Uh, I don't know if this happens to everyone, but sometimes when I add a checkbox, it doesn't give me the label next to the checkbox. So if you click on the form and then click again on the checkbox, the checkbox becomes selected and we get a blue circle that gives us options for the checkbox. If you turn the label off and back on again, you get your label back. I don't know why I have to do that, but it seems to be something that I have to do. And then you can click a few times to get into this checkbox and you could say, um, notify me of other offers as an example and then if people check that box then you know you can notify them of other offers otherwise no so now that I have this checkbox in there the checkbox itself is white if I preview this in the browser you'll see that the checkbox has a couple of states to it when I mouse over it it changes a little bit gets a little bit brighter when I click on it I get a gray checkbox uh, that, that is checked which isn't super beautiful when I click on it again it goes unchecked and what you'll find is if you want to change the style of this it's pretty crazy I'm gonna click a couple of times here it's switching me back to Muse which lags a little bit so now that I have this box selected you'll find that there are six different states there's the checkbox when it's not checked and your mouse isn't over it there's a checkbox when you move your mouse over it but it's still unchecked there's the state when you click down and the checkbox isn't checked but you're trying to check it etc etc so six states that are all image fills and if you look here if I go to fill you can see that there is a checkbox unchecked image fill and if I click to change it it brings me to my finder where I have to choose an image so if you guys have tons and tons of pre-created checkbox images you're golden but if you need to create checkbox images this could be really really tedious because you have to create six of them if you want to fill all of these in so with that said this sounds like kind of a nightmare doesn't it I've got good news. I have gone ahead and I have added to museresources.com a free download that you guys will probably be stoked about. It is on the graphics page and it is right here called Checkbox Collection. It is 540 checkbox states of different sizes, shapes, colors. Uh, not so much sizes, more shapes and colors and uh, different colored checkboxes and different appearances. And uh, if you go ahead and download that, it is completely free. You just click download, it goes straight to your computer, and then you will be able to swap out all of these checkboxes without having to break your back. So here I've got my checkbox collection, and if I go back to Muse and I choose to make a change here, what I've done is I've sort of put them into cohesive sets that go together. So let's say I wanted this to be a black checkbox. I could go in here, I'll start with the unchecked state. I'll choose fill. Here where it says image, I will click on the title of it and I've got all this stuff on my desktop. Here's my checkbox collection. So as you browse these, you'll get used to what styles you wanna use, but um, I do want to use a white check mark. So I'll go to the white checks folder. Oops, that was an accident. And once I'm in the white checks folder, I get to choose if I want a circle, if I want a rounded square, if I want a sharp square. I'm gonna go with a rounded square and I'm gonna go with a black rounded square. And once I get in there, you can see that there are six different states. They're in order, they're numbered, so they're gonna be in alphabetical order. And I can start using those. So number one is unchecked. And now I will switch to the next state. I'll choose fill, click on the image, choose the second one, go to my third state, you guys get the idea, but I'm actually gonna go through and do all six of these real quick so that way we can preview it in the browser. So I've got my first checked state, which is the fourth one, I believe. Yeah, so I'll click number four. We're already at the fifth one. Go to fill, image, number five. Boom, very close to done. And the sixth one. So now that I've got all of those selected, I've got all of those entered for the various states, when I go and preview this in the browser, not that black was the best choice on a black background, but when I mouse over, I can see that it gets lighter, responds to the mouse. When I click down, it gets darker. When I let go, I get a white check mark. And uh, I think you'll find that you like these checkboxes that I made for you guys better than the default checkbox. If you don't, at least you could probably pick one that suits the style of your website better, or is at least different from the default, so your website won't look like everyone else's, and people will wonder, how did you do that? That's really cool, it matches the website. So. I hope you guys enjoy those uh, free checkboxes in that download because uh, it was kind of a lot of work. It's 540 of them, and uh, I only had a couple of days to make them for you guys. So go and download them, take full advantage, and uh, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe. 
download other cool free stuff from museresources.com, and I'll have more great tutorials coming soon.